This is Pentecost Sunday. And um, once again, I just want to say how honored I am to be a part of this service. I want Ephesians chapter number four and and forgive me for for not actually getting this to you. I should have did this so you could have it on the screens, but Ephesians chapter number, well, let's go to Ephesians 1 first. We're going to go to Ephesians 1, and I'm going to give you a moment to find that in your Bibles or if they can get that up on the screen. Ephesians chapter number 1, I'm going to start with verse number 11, and I'm going to read down to verse number 14. Ephesians chapter number one, verses 11 through 14. Now, this is going to be, y'all got me stirred up, <laughs> but but I have to stay still because I can't leave the camera and I don't know how in the world this is going to work with the way I am stirred up with what has transpired in that room already. But I'm going to try to stay right here but if I leave the screen, I'll come back because I might have to take off running around my office because this is what you all have already been doing. This is what the anointing has already been producing in that room. And I just want to put an amen to it. Ephesians chapter number one, um, verse number 11 says, in him, we have also obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. I want you to underline that phrase, that we who trusted in Christ, those of us that receive him should be to the praise of his glory. And the Bible says, in him, you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom you also having believed were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is, and I'm reading out the New King James, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. That phrase, the Holy Spirit, verse number 14, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, which means that word guarantee right there means a down payment, that the Holy Spirit is the down payment for our inheritance until the purchase of the possession which means until we leave planet earth, the Holy Spirit has been given to us as a down payment of what we will receive in totality once we get to heaven. And so basically the Holy Spirit is a down payment of heaven. And he is given to us so that we can experience on this side before we even get to the other side, a dimension of heaven in our lives. And so he is simply put to be given to us so that we can experience heaven on earth. Woo! Come on, lift your hands and say, I'm about to experience heaven on earth. That's what has happened in that room. It is heaven invading the earth. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit has been given to us so that we can experience the best that we can get on this side until we are redeemed fully with the purchase of our bodies till we all in a glorified state 
the Holy Spirit has been given for a down payment of the fullness of glory. Now we know when you tie in first John to that verse chapter number three, when it says now are we the sons of God? Right now, right now, it does not yet appear what we shall be. For when we see him, we shall see him as he is and we shall be like him, which means there is a dimension of glory we will never get to until we get out of these bodies and the whole renewing of a new heaven and a new earth and we all have glorified bodies and glorified spirits and glorified minds. Until we get to that dimension, John says, don't wait. There, there's something we got right now. And so there is a salvation that we experience now. And then there is a fullness of that which is to come. That's why when you understand this revelation, you won't mourn people that die like we mourn people. Because when we think of death, we think of somebody losing out or somebody, you know, some sadness, some grief. But Paul says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. It ain't until you get out of this body that you really step into the fullness of the dimensions that you were really created and born to be because you are no longer tied to the earth, to the natural, to the physical, to the carnal. You no longer have to deal with feelings and pains and aches. You no longer have to deal with the curse that's in the earth. And so when people die, they don't lose anything. They gain everything. So Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Why? Because until you get out of the body, you can't get paid in full. <laughs> Which means death, death is when God writes the check on the fullness of everything that you were ever created to be. And you step into the full dimension of being just like God. Just like Jesus, no limitations, no barriers, no curses, nothing in the earth realm. But until then, until then. The Bible says he sent the Holy Spirit to be a down payment on that. And I don't know about you, but I want to experience the fullness of whatever I can receive right now. I'm not waiting till I get there. I'm going to work this down payment. I'm going to work this earnest money of the Spirit of God until I fulfill feel God's plan for you and I, which is to have heaven manifesting in us in the earth realm for the purposes of redemption. That's why your Bible just declare that we were not created to just give God glory with our praise and with our worship. We were actually created to be to the praise of his glory. Oh, did you hear what I said? That we were not just created to praise God and give God glory. We were actually created to be to the praise of his glory. Whew. Which means what God really wants out of us, it's for us to manifest who he is. So that when we are seen, we are representatives of his glory. And I'm telling you in that room, I'm telling you the Rosellas have created an atmosphere. By the way, Peter, you didn't tell me you could sing like that. I mean, I was sitting here mesmerized <laughs> at the anointing that's on your life. But I'm telling you, we should be such people such uh, manifestations and representations of what God looks like until when people see us, it causes them to magnify God. Isn't that amazing that God's about to do something with you that's going to cause men to praise God? 
I was listening to the young man giving the testimony about his grandchild. And I'm telling you, God's going to finish that work. And when things like that happen, it makes people realize God is real. I'm telling you, God is about to do things in your life that is going to cause people to recognize that God is real. God is alive. And we should be demonstrating in our lives these things that cause people to have an awareness of the power and majesty of God. And so you are about to give God glory with your life. <laughs> You're not just going to do it with your songs, with your music, with your dance. Oh, we do all of that. Thank God. But no, your life is going to be a praise unto God. When, when you speak, when you manifest, when you see the demonstration of the things that the Spirit of God does through you, it is going to cause shockwaves to come to people and awakenings to people that there is indeed a resurrected Christ that is alive and well, and I can see it manifested in your life. That is the purpose of Pentecost. I'm sorry. I forgot to announce my title. That's my title. I started preaching before I announced my title. The purpose of Pentecost. Now, in order to unpack this fully, you can't talk Pentecost without talking resurrection. Because it is the resurrection that led into Pentecost. And so the consummation of salvation moves in dimensions, which means being born again is not the end of your salvation. It is the beginning of it. In other words, once you get born again, you just getting started. <laughs> you just getting started. That's why people that have just preached salvation, that is great. And I thank God. And it prepares people for heaven. But just preaching salvation doesn't prepare you for the earth. Because salvation is the beginning of it is the beginning now of an introduction into the God kind of life. And so salvation now opens up a realm, opens up a dimension to us that God has created and predestined us to walk in. And so once we get saved, there are now dimensions and transformations and revelations and spiritual manifestations that we are now, we are now ushered into and that the Holy Spirit has been sent to lead us into those manifestations and demonstrations. 